Hello everyone, welcome to the rcprinter.com YouTube channel and another episode of Should I Build It? I'm your host, Jordan Visco. Today we're reviewing this beautiful looking 1 10th scale Koenigsegg Agera that was designed by Oli Skold. You can find this design and all of Oli's designs at depreneyes.com. In this video, we're going to talk about what some of the positives of this design are and maybe what some of the negatives are. And we're going to help you decide for yourself if this is something that you might want to build. And remember, if you're looking for ideas of fun RC projects to build, instructions on how to build them, kits or parts, check us out at rcprinter.com. Okay, so this model was again designed by a uh, Swedish designer and academic named Olli Skold. And from what I could find online, he has a lot of experience with 3D printing and a lot of experience with 3D design. But this was the first foray into 3D printed RC cars. Now, according to one video that I watched, Ollie's had a fascination with the Agera RS1 for a long time. But it wasn't until a guy named Doug DeMauro did a full 30 minute walkthrough of the Agera in 4K that that Ollie was able to actually to see all the details that he needed in order to create this model. Now, obviously the car looks amazing. It is definitely one of the prettiest models we've ever built. It looks very similar to the Agera RS1, but in making the model, Ollie wasn't interested in just making a car that looked like an RS1. He wanted one that functioned that way as well. And so everything in the design is as close as possible to scale. All he really wanted the structure of the car to resemble the RS1's uh, structure as closely as possible. So he's actually gone with a monocoque design here. And the entire cockpit is one piece in and of itself. And then the front end and the rear end actually just bolt onto this uh, center console. Um, so they're actually completely separate pieces, unlike a regular RC car, which normally you'll have a flat bottom frame, and then everything else is just kind of bolted on top of that. So let's go ahead and give you a little tour. All right, so let's go over some of the cool engineering feats that Ollie's included in this design. First of all, I wanna start with these doors here. These doors use a dihedral synchrohelix hinge, which allows the doors to not only lift up, but also come away from the vehicle to get out of the way of the driver when the driver wants to get in. So they work like this. And they're fully 3D printed with just some screws in them and they work really amazingly well. I can close them here as well, nice and easily. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of play, but it's pretty good for a 3D printed dihedral uh, synchro helix hinge, which is something I've never built before and something that was like really cool to play around with. So the hood and this rear hood here, they both open up. Unfortunately, they don't stay up, but uh, they do open up and down like this. And uh, again, they don't just open in one direction, they come up and then also forwards a bit, um, just to get it a little bit more realistic looking. And the same thing with the rear one, it comes up and then back as well. Just like that. And then we also have this uh, top cover. It just gets placed on top like that. There's nothing really locking it down, so it will fall off as you're driving. Uh, so normally I just leave it off, but you can put that on top. Next, we should talk about the lights on the vehicle. Uh, first, I'll show you what I've done, which is a really simple version. So you can see here, I've just put in some small five millimeter LEDs and I've done it the really, really simple, regular RC type way. But what Ollie's done, and it's actually best to see it in his video, so I'll put a link to the video down below if you're interested in, in checking out a much more complicated lighting version of this car. But he's actually used fiber optics 
uh, in all of these little holes around the light here to have them all light up in a sequence when the car turns on. Um, so they light up and they flash. Um, he also has these little side lights hooked up to the turn signals. And you can also put tiny little lights in the side view mirrors as well. And those can light up and blink if you want as well. Now another interesting feature is this steering wheel. You can actually set the steering wheel to turn whenever you turn your steering. And it does require another servo. I wasn't able to find a servo of the right size that would make it turn, so I've built my model without that. But if you're interested, that is something you can add as well. My interior also is pretty plain. You can see I've opted to go with silver seats and a black dashboard, but you can add all kinds of things there. There's decals you can put in there, and those are available with some of the modded design files. Now this car is a rear wheel drive car with the motor in a mid location. So I'll take this back hood off here, and then we can peer around a little bit closer at some of the electronics. Okay, so here we are looking in the back end of our Koenigsegge Gera. The motor is located in here. The space fits for a 540 size motor, and I've just used a cheap brushless motor off Banggood. The motor came as a kit with this ESC, and I actually had to modify these rear arms. So this is the regular rear arm here, and I've had to create this new one uh, just to fit over the fan on my giantly oversized ESC here. I've mounted my on off switch right there. The battery comes up from the bottom here and you can see the cable plugs in right here. And the battery itself is actually accessed from underneath the vehicle and there's a little plate that covers it with six M2 screws. And it's actually a bit of a pain to get the battery in and out and get this cable up and routed over top of the motor each time. And here's a quick shot of what the undercarriage looks like along with the battery compartment and you can see the motor there as well. The motor drive shaft comes out here and it uses a 3D printed open differential to drive the power to the wheels. From here there's 3D printed diff cups in there and then these drive shafts are actually made out of a carbon fiber shaft. So you take this carbon fiber shaft and then you print little 3D balls that sit on the end and you can see in here um, the little rod, so that rod goes through the 3D printed part that gets attached to the drive shaft, and that's actually what drives the wheels. These clear pieces in here, he calls them the shaft hubs, and I've actually broken those numerous times, and so I printed that little uh, circle at the end that goes around the shaft hub, just to try and give it a little bit more uh, rigidity, and it seems to have worked fairly well. However, I'm pretty sure that the drive shafts are also wearing into the diff cups um, that run through here into the differential. And I think before long, that's something that's going to fail as well. So the car doesn't use 3D printed shocks, it uses uh, standard purchased ones. And I wasn't able to find ones of the size that he actually recommended. So I ended up using these ones that I found off AliExpress. And then I just shortened them a bit by uh, inserting a small piece of tube inside the body of the shaft. And it works okay. You can see here I get a little bit of flex, but it's not perfect for sure. Okay, now let's take a quick look at the front of the vehicle. So here you can see inside the front, you can see how um, all of these front bars here are just connected to this middle section. And then the front nosing actually just bolts right onto those bars. Again, we have the little mini shocks up front and it has a, a little bit of a suspension here. So one of the coolest features of this car is these front wheels and the steering hubs are actually located on the inside of the wheel. And what that actually does is it allows these wheels to turn with an axis of rotation that begins right about here. And so you can actually have a lot less clearance. So if we go to the side here, and I put the hood down, you can see the clearance around the wheels is much more like a, like a, the real version of the automobile. And uh, the wheels can kind of turn within that. He also has created these 3D printable disc brakes and these calipers here, which add uh, a pretty cool aesthetic to the car. The wheels and tires are both 3D printed. The wheels themselves are made out of PLA and the tires are made out of TPU. 
Um, unfortunately, TPU tires, while they look amazing and they fit this model perfectly, they don't really have very much grip. So as you can see with the back tires here, I've ended up putting some rubber bands around there just to get a little bit of traction and it works a bit, but definitely rubber tires would be the way to go. Unfortunately, finding off the shelf rubber tires for this car is virtually impossible. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how the build actually went. Printing the pieces themselves wasn't actually too hard. The designer's taken uh, some pretty good care to make sure that all pieces of the car can print uh, quite easily. However, building it isn't so easy. There's unfortunately not great instructions online. He has some images you can follow of how things go together, but a lot of it uh, is a bit of trial and error. Now, another issue that you're going to run into is that a bunch of the stuff isn't in stock online and you're gonna have problems finding something. So like I said, I have problems finding the correct shocks. He also recommends metal ball studs for the steering in the front. I wasn't able to find those, so I ended up 3D printing them. Uh, the 3D printed ones actually work pretty well. Um, after a little while, they loosen up and they start to pop off. So I just glued some washers to the top of the balls and that seems to have held things on pretty well. And like I said earlier as well, I wasn't able to find that mini servo uh, that was gonna control the steering wheel. You know, a couple other things, um, he actually uses four different sizes of bearings in this model and he uses carbon fiber for the drive shafts. And if that's stuff that you have lying around, that's great. But if you have to go and buy like multi-packs of carbon fiber shafts and four different bearing sizes, it's gonna end up costing a little bit extra. I'd have to say the coolest thing um, for me about building this was, was actually building these doors. Um, Again, I've never printed anything like them or built anything like them. Okay, so obviously there's a ton of cool features that have been included in this RC car, but let's maybe talk about some of the stuff that's a little less cool. Any issue that I do have with this car comes down to reliability. So you should be aware of a few of these things if this is something you're hoping to build. The front steering seems a bit light and I don't think it'll hold up to the kind of abuse that you're normally gonna put an RC car through. As well, the rear shafts and diff cups I don't think those are gonna hold up for you and that's an area of the car that you're gonna end up working on quite a bit. I know I've replaced those shaft hubs uh, six or seven times already and I'm sure I have some more times in my future as well. These 3D printed TPU tires, they look great, but unfortunately the grip just totally sucks and they're not really usable for a fully functional RC car. Unfortunately, you don't really have a ton of option when it comes to tires for this car. Uh, just based on how it was designed, it doesn't fit any standard off-the-shelf RC car tires. One option would be casting your own tires out of rubber, but that's a whole nother ball of wax that you got to get into. One other thing is that I get some crazy squeaking coming from my front wheels, and I'm not exactly sure what it's from. It might be some of these PLA paces uh, here rubbing together. But other people's cars seem to be fine, so that might be something that's just unique to my build. Now, another thing to note is there have been a bunch of people over at all these forums at depronize.com who've taken it upon themselves to make modifications for this, and he's got a whole um, sub forum there about mods. And one user in particular, whose username is I want to be the guy 1980, has actually gone through and fixed a lot of these issues that I'm talking about here. Uh, he's replaced these rear axles with CVDs. He's uh, completely redone the front steering and he's actually developed molds so that you can cast your own tires out of rubber and that's all super cool and he's done a lot of work as well on a manual on how to put it together. So that brings us back to answering our initial question is this an RC model that you should build? Well I'd say it really depends. If this is your first RC project this is probably not a great one for you. This is something where you're going to need to have a bit of experience in order to get through it. I also don't think you should build it if you're looking for an RC car that's going to be reliable right out of the box and something that's going to be you know fun to drive right away. However if you're looking to tinker a little bit and you love the idea of having a 3D printable Agera RS model that also moves drives and has you know, awesome flashy lights and dihedral synchro helix doors. And you're excited about getting all of these features uh, tuned up properly to where they're working perfectly. And maybe the idea of, you know, casting your own tires um, appeals to you. And you're excited about trying out some of the mods that the community has available. Then yeah, this might be the right model for you to build. Now, if you are looking to build it the way that you get the STLs, is a bit different than normal. Ollie doesn't actually sell them, but if you head over to his forums at depronize.com 
and you click on the Agera RS forum and look for a post entitled about the project, how to get the STLs. It'll tell you that the files are free with a donation to the forums. And it's a donation of any amount, so you can base that on how much you think it's worth and also how much you can afford. And then you can just contact the username admin and that's Ollie and he'll give you his email address and you can just send him a PayPal for whatever amount you feel is fair. Once the PayPal is received, he'll give you access to a private subforum, and that's where all of the build files and instructions and mods are all located. Well, that's it for this time. We hope you found this useful and we'll see you in the next video. And remember, if you're looking for ideas on cool RC projects to build, instructions how to build them, kits or parts, check us out, rcprinter.com.